Hey guys, I'm Jennifer, joined by Corey. Hey guys. And we are the host of the Doctor Marketing Tips podcast. And once again, we are here this week on Facebook Live, and we are going to bring to you a new topic, something we've been talking about a lot this week with some of our clients and with a new client that we recently brought on, and that is really the need to kind of take a step back, whether you're a new practice or you're an existing practice, but you know, it's important to do an inventory of what you got out there and really kind of do an audit on your entire practice and your marketing efforts. Because you throw things against the wall, maybe you think they're working, but maybe they're not working. And, and sometimes it's good to get a fresh perspective. And so that's what we thought we would talk about here today. Corey has outlined into four really easy steps to follow if you want to go ahead and do an audit of your practice. Yeah, so uh, let's jump right in. Uh, step one, kind of do an inventory of what you're doing and what you want to be doing. Um, I think a lot of times what we run into, and I mean, we're guilty of this too, is like yeah. you get so busy that you're just doing things. You're just over and over and over. You know who's the worst at that is Danielle. Yeah. She is a task master. Shout out to check Danielle. It off the list. Just, just <laughs> check it off the list. 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 So it, I, think, I think like you have to take a step back and say, okay, why am I doing these things? And and to do that, the first step is to get everything that you actually have um, already kind of in your inventory. So that's, you know, is it website statistics? You wanna look at how many visit visitors you've got, conversions, um, pages that are doing really well. Um, something that we notice with a lot yeah. of clients is that we'll create a ton of content and then, you know, we monitor and pay attention mm -hmm. to that stuff, but we know that they don't have the time to do that. So you're probably in that position too, where you don't have a ton of time to actually go into those and say, oh wow, that page about a bone cyst is doing like 10 times better than every other page on the website. I think it's also important when you're looking at getting an inventory and you get a full understanding of your website to understand like who's sending you traffic and where are your incoming links coming from. Yeah. And you definitely. know, you definitely want to look at which pages are performing well, maybe look at bounce rates. You know, how does your bounce rate compare this year to last year? And then like Corey said, looking at the, the content that is that is really helping you bring traffic to your website and then evaluating the, you know, as you're doing your inventory, all of your content and the stuff that's performing well, because if it's performing well, that should really help you in dictating your strategy moving forward. Definitely, and, and something else to consider too is if you've got a content strategy in place, so in other words, if you're adding things to your website to help get people there, um, you know, what's working really well and then you can actually look through uh, your Google Analytics that's tied to your website, or have your marketing group look at those things for you. Uh, and they can say, you know, over the time that we've started this strategy, let's look back a year and see how organic traffic has grown. Amen. That is really important because that means that the, or the um, content that you're creating, it's actually working, it's doing something. Mm -hmm. So you're not just spinning your wheels and saying, oh, I have to create this content. And then every month you're creating something or writing something and you don't really know if it's working. Well, and analytics will let you get so deep into it. You can see how long people are spending on a particular page. Um, if you have multiple physicians, um, a couple of years ago I did an audit on which physicians performed better and why on a particular practice website. I think that when you're doing your inventory, it's, it's important to do an inventory of your social media channels, especially the social channel that you spend your most amount of yeah. time. Because you spend, um, at least the practices we work with, they spend money on their Facebook ads and boosting on Facebook, but we're not sure if that actually turns it you know, into a transaction sometimes. And so it's important to see where we're putting our dollars or with some of the practices we work with, are we giving more love to one doctor or more one subspecialty within a practice versus another? Yeah. Because we're constantly having to answer to what the physicians say, hey, my clinic's down, or you're giving too much love to Dr. Jones and not over here to, to Dr. White and you know what's going on there, and we like to come back and say, no, hold on a second, here's the numbers to back it up. Yeah, and that can be tricky too, because you may think that you're spreading the love around and everyone's equal, right, but again, because you just kind of get in that cycle of mm -hmm. let's do things, and then you know if another doctor or their, their patient care coordinator comes up and says, hey, we wanted to try this one thing, you stop what you're doing, you help them with that, all of a sudden you've done that five times in a row and you forgot about six other doctors that are in the practice. Especially, and this is easy to do, especially if you are automating your social post. Yes. Because then you can you can categorize into certain buckets 
and those buckets will help you when you're doing a big audit of your social activities. And then another thing you can do, um, I know it's probably with step two, but another thing you can do when you're social is you can set it up within Facebook in particular and compare yourself to practices that you consider your competition. Yeah. So you can see you know, your, your page growth, your engagement, their engagement, their page growth, and you can actually have a little competition with you know amongst yourselves without them even knowing about it. Yeah. But you first gotta understand who you are and look in the mirror, that's part of the inventory. Definitely. And then you can start looking at what you're gonna do up against your competitors. Last thing about the inventory, I would say also go through, and if you don't have a running tab already of online reviews, Absolutely. That is super important. So you want to make sure that uh, you have kind of you know your your thumb on the pulse of how many positive, how many negative, how many neutral um, are all of the doctors' sites claimed? Because unfortunately, every doctor that's in your practice probably has their own directory listing. And then on top of those uh, are all of the physical office locations claimed, and do they have reviews and ratings that you need? About too. Yeah, absolutely. And I would add um, when you're doing your inventory to make sure um, when you're evaluating your website, understand what pages that you have that are really old or pages that have um, like bad links to them mm -hmm. because those will, um, you'll get penalized through search and sometimes you don't realize that that's out there and especially if you have a website that's a little older mm -hmm. or pretty dynamic and deep in terms of content you um, kind of lose focus of what's behind the scenes and only pay attention to what's on the surface. And so make sure as you're doing your website audit um, that you are really looking at you know the kind of things that are below the surface. And then, Corey, how often do you think people should be doing something like this? Um, I mean, it, it depends. I, I think it makes sense to, if you're, if you're talking about doing like a full audit, mm -hmm. I think that's something it makes sense to do probably like once a year. Maybe once a year, every couple of years, every yeah. Every couple of years, yeah. And then, but if you're gonna go into specific content, um, I, I think that makes more sense to do a little bit more often. I to kind see, of agree. You know, like every like three months or so maybe. I kind of agree. To see <clears throat> what, web, uh, what web traffic is really working and what's not. Because a piece of content like you, you were kind of alluding to, it can get backlinked somewhere. Um, like out of the blue, somebody just finds it and says, oh, that's really interesting, link to it, and if they have a really popular site, all of a sudden that page is gonna blow up, and if you only do this every few years, you'd have no idea. Absolutely, and if you see like a, a change in traffic, sometimes that change in traffic can be related directly to a, um, a link partner that's gone away that you didn't even realize that was out there. Yeah. And so um, I think it's just good once in a while to take a step back and get an inventory of everything you've got out there and like you were alluding to, Corey, you know, from a content standpoint, maybe look at that that strategy a little more often. Yeah. If it were me and I was overwhelmed in a marketing department and I just didn't know if I'd have time to do this type of thing, I would set aside one little piece, mm -hmm. maybe every month, Bite that off. to evaluate yeah. and then keep track of that, and then just that way you can perpetuate it. If you're not going to hire somebody to do an audit, you can do your own audit piece by piece. I think while you're looking at your inventory of all of your your pieces. It also makes sense to look at the strategy too. So, you know, what's the overall goal of, of your marketing? Do you even have a goal? Right. And obviously, you know, you could say, oh, well, it's to drive patients. Duh. But, I mean, are you trying to drive patients for a specific subspecialty, a doctor, surgeries? Are you trying to move more product? Um, I think it makes sense at this point to look at it and, and kind of reevaluate what you're trying to do and then how successful you are at doing that and then you can back into that number. Yeah, and I think if you're talking about goals, it's a whole other topic of conversation yeah. because um, I'm a big fan of setting goals, but then when you go in and do that inventory and, and evaluate the strategy, backing into the goals so you know exactly what it's gonna take budgetary-wise mm -hmm. to achieve those goals. And it's tough too, because sometimes when we're working with a practice manager, their, or a doctor, their goal is just, I want more patients. Right. But we want to quantify it. Well, how many more patients are you going to, right. is going to make you satisfied? What is more? Yeah, what is more? Define it. Because if it's 10 new patients a month or 30 new patients a month or 300 new patients a month, the strategy is going to be a little different and the budget's absolutely going to be different. Yeah, definitely. All right, so step two. Okay. Um, compare yourself to your competitors or heck, even start with just one competitor. Mm -hmm. Just pick someone, like your biggest competitor in town and compare yourself to them. Or so, pick who you want to emulate. Exactly. Who do you want to be like? Yeah. And and so that starts with, um, I think it makes sense to look at what they're doing from a traditional media standpoint. You know, are they in community magazines and how do their ads look? Do you like the way the ads look? Um, print, radio, outdoor, any of that stuff. Um, from an email standpoint, do they have an email newsletter that they send out to patients? Go to their website. Are they collecting email addresses? Yeah. Do you have an email newsletter you're sending out? Do you collect uh, patient emails on the website? Those are important things to pay attention to. From a, a digital side, um, you can look at what they do on social media. Yep. 
how many platforms they're on. Like, you know, if the competitor you're looking at, are, are they on Instagram and Snapchat and every other channel that's out there? You know, you're only on Facebook from 2011, you know? Um, also, like you mentioned, if you're gonna emulate them, uh, and this doesn't even have to be in, in the uh, medical industry or the local industry, you can pick other um, offices that are similar to yours and look at their website. Absolutely, pick look, doctors that you like, and yeah. you know, or pick docs that your docs went to med school with. They'll sure. tell you who they wanna be like and right. who does a good job. They think they do a good job, and then you run a test on it, and you find out they're not doing so great. Yeah. And I also look at um, not only the way that the website looks and it functions and, and the way that it loads on different devices, um, for the competitor, but look at their content as well. Do they post every week, every couple of days? I remember we were working with... Um, yes, an orthopedic practice. Yeah, yep. and they hired somebody to post, was it every... It was like three times every a few week days, they yeah. were putting out brand new content, but it was very um, very vanilla content, very yeah. evergreen, almost like you could buy it anywhere and then kind of rehash it. And I think they were writing it from scratch, but it wasn't, it wasn't specific to the practice. Right. Which I, so I wonder always, because we never actually ended up getting a contract with them, we just really started paying attention to them. I wonder how well it did. I wonder yeah, if their I, dollars were spent well. I, I don't know, I mean, that just, it seems like one, that's way too much content. Or, and two, if, if there's not a lot of value behind it, you know, it's not worth reading, who's really reading it, you know? But the fact is, it was an orthopedic practice and we work with um, mm -hmm. several large orthopedic practices. So we were comparing our practices to this practice, yep. and on the surface, it looked like that practice was just knocking it out of the park. But when we do a little bit more research, and there's plenty of tools out there that you can plug in certain URLs and compare your domain name to somebody else's domain, and you can get some really good data. A lot of it's free, a lot of it you have to pay for, but you can get a good idea of how much effort and time and energy they're putting into something and what kind of results they're getting. And I think, um, so that kind of leads into step three, and identify some areas for improvement. I think what you have, all of your content, all of your inventory from your marketing assets, then you compare it to your competitors. It makes sense to kind of look in the mirror and say, well, what do they do really well that I want to do? And what do we do poorly that we can do better at? Absolutely. And I think if <clears throat> once you have that inventory, it really helps you can look at it and lay it out and say, easily, well, we could do X, Y, and Z better, and that wouldn't take hardly any, any work at all now that we know what it is. And that's the importance of an audit, is it kind of gives you that insight um, to, you can just I, immediately identify areas for improvement, right? I think so, and I think that um, the beauty of kind of taking a step back is, and we alluded to it before, we're guilty of it, you know, you're just trying to check a task mm -hmm. off your list, but if when you want to rise to that next level, it's so important to be able to take a step back and spend time just thinking. And when yeah. you're comparing, when you first understand where you are, and then when you can take the time to compare yourself to others, that's where the ideas are generated of where you can find real opportunities for improvement. And so what you're alluding to is correct, because you've got the things that are like the quick fixes that you can go after right now, and then you have the things that, you know, this is gonna take more conversation, it's gonna take, you know, a review of the budget, this is the stuff that we wanna aim for later. Big picture, pie in the sky. Yes, big picture, picture yeah. stuff. But the ideas come from having that data, and you can't make educated decisions yeah. and know what you're aiming for unless you know where you started from. Right. And again, like we said, you know, it makes perfect sense at this point to go back and look at your goals and what you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve, and then maybe you can tweak your messaging and achieve those goals a little bit better. So, for instance, if you're trying to get more surgeries or you're trying to move more Botox, you know, if, if your marketing message is just, hey, we have this available, or we have this procedure available, maybe you tweak that a little bit and you can focus in on a specific surgery or you can focus in on moving a specific product or you can focus in on a doctor that you kind of left behind and then forgot about because he's not allowed at the board meetings. You know, the one thing that I think the last time we did an audit on our own site is you can take a look at the headlines you're using mm -hmm. on your content and you could spend just a month doing nothing but rewriting the headlines for all of your content, your social post, your blog post, your video descriptions, your blogs within the website, and you can make a huge difference just by changing and just focusing on those headlines. Because when you're writing the big story or you're doing the video, it's a big project, and the headline's kind of just part of checking off the list. Mm -hmm. But when you're just looking at that one piece, that's where the good ideas come from. Definitely, yeah, and in the end, I mean, like we're all guilty of it. If there's a captivating headline, 
you're probably going to click on it if you're if you're mm -hmm. even just a little bit interested in it because it's engaging and you know if you're like you said you're trying to check things off the list maybe you don't think about that when you're going through it the first time and an added benefit to that too is when you update content that's already on your website um, Google really likes that so if you're changing a headline adding a photo um, maybe putting an infographic in or something like that that content can see a boost off of that as well yeah and there's plenty of research out there on um, how to write you know amazing headlines and there's a lot of data that backs it up yeah. and you know other practices and giant brands have done all the AB testing so look at what they've done grab a swipe file from someone and you've got a starting point yeah. all right so last step um, track measure and review what you're doing so you find ways to track what you're doing and quantify it because you know we find that a lot of practices are guilty of this, where again, you're, you're spinning your wheels, you're just checking things off the list, and then when it comes time to say, well, does it work? The answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So if you can, when you're going through these things, you can find ways to identify if these things are actually working or not. So it's quantifying if there's an uptick in patients, if there's an uptick in surgeries, um, maybe like we mentioned earlier, that organic traffic is growing or referral traffic's growing, mm -hmm. social traffic, social engagement, you know, more likes, comments, and shares. Um, just anything that you can do to kind of put a number on your efforts so that way when it comes time uh, and you have to present something like this, you can say, so here's what I did and here's the results that it produced. And here's what it cost. And here's what it costs to do you it. You know, one thing I, I find helpful when you're, when you're analyzing or taking your inventory and looking at you know, a competitive analysis, and then, you know, like Corey's saying, you get in there and you start seeing these numbers, it really like turns on the light bulb because you'll say, you know what, I can see how many patients I brought in, but how many patients um, per subspecialty? And then you find out, heck, I'm not even tracking patients per subspecialty, which is when you see what you're doing, you get your hands around it, it's, and then all of a sudden it's not so overwhelming and you have a moment of clarity, then you identify the opportunities where you can go out there and make those minor tweaks to the way you're tracking and just blow it out of the water. Yeah. Really just back it up. And we all know from working with physicians that they want data and they want hard numbers. And everything in marketing today is data driven and hard numbers. So there's no reason, you have no excuse anymore for not having that. But you gotta start somewhere and that starting point is really gonna be the analysis that you're gonna do of your overall marketing efforts. Well, not everything is data driven, but it should Pretty be. Pretty much it everything. Sh it should be, yeah. Everything we're doing for the most part is data driven. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I think it makes sense too to, again, like if you're going to put numbers on these things and you're going to review what's working and what's not, um, it's okay to be honest and say that you know, not everything that you're doing is going to work, but you have to have that honest sort of conversation you know, with yourself and with your team and say that not everything is going to be a you know, home run out of the park. Um, some things are going to work, some things are not. Some things that you maybe don't believe in or you think is silly are going to be some of your best uh, areas for growth. Yeah, and when it comes to data, I'm analyzing, I'm going to wrap it up with this. I'm going to say that every time you do a project, whether it's launching a piece of content on your website that's got a video and also has a piece of long form content, um, that project is not done until you've evaluated the performance of that project. So if you have a, a campaign going to attract patients for your fertility clinic, and it started with a piece of content and with a video and then you had some social media and then you had some social advertising then you had AdWords. It doesn't count until you've wrapped it all up and kind of given yourself the overall analysis because you can do an audit for your overall practice but you need to do an audit for your individual campaigns and if you don't do it while they're fresh in your mind and while you're just coming off spending those dollars, you'll never go back and do it. And you can't grow in a large way unless you start paying attention to the small things. And the small things are where you can make the biggest difference. Definitely. That's why you want to do an audit on your practice, and that's why you want to have an understanding of where you compare um, in the in the marketplace. And doing it may take time, but it will be time well spent. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll say um, to add to your point about the, how the small things make a big difference. Um, as we find more and more about search and what people are looking for. Um, they really want something specific more than you know the general broad overview Agreed. of just your practice. So that's a huge opportunity to, if you can zero in and get incredibly narrow in your scope on some of these pieces of content, you can see huge, huge amounts of growth. Awesome. So with that, I'm Jennifer. I'm Corey. And we're um, the host of the Doctor Marketing Tips podcast. Until next time.